Oh, well, basically it was a case of um, uh, not so much sceptical as, as I'd suggest cautious. Um, social media is without doubt inevitable. That, that was something that I realised years ago, but it was a case of which horse to back. Um, that's where the scepticism came in. Uh, so, you know, do we go with Twitter? Do we go with Facebook? Do we go with MySpace? Do we go with uh, LinkedIn, Plaxo, or any one of uh, a number of different mediums? Um, where do we put our resources? Where do we put our time? Where will it finish up? Uh, so, basically, we did quite a bit of research uh, to find out what was the best method, but first off, we had to determine what it was we wanted to use social media for. Uh, and a very important step that I took was uh, involving a good trainer to demystify the process and, and of course that's where I asked Lee to come in um, and uh, you know that's where you were excellent in that regard to help us first off demystify what social media was, figure out what medium suited us best for what we wanted to achieve in terms of resources, message and reach. So, uh, yeah, so not so much sceptical but cautious and that's something I'd recommend to every, anybody, work out what medium fits you best, do your research before you jump in. Oh, okay, certainly. Um, we use Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and we'll be releasing Facebook this week. With Twitter, we use that one because basically Twitter is a fantastic medium for getting up the speed and across the uh, social media seen very quickly and establishing a profile and connecting with the public and also if you use it this way as we do uh, your own staff and, and members of your team. Twitter's uh, short messages of 160 characters are quick and easy to write. Uh, they allow you to convey a short burst of information very succinctly uh, or lead people to other sites such as YouTube or Twitter or articles or websites. Uh, so we use it to basically establish a presence on the social media scene, communicate information to our staff quickly about what's happening, uh, make announcements or draw attention to certain factors of, of events that are happening within the industry or the, um, uh, the real estate sector or market, and uh, basically to really establish a presence. It's very effective because it doesn't require a lot of resources in terms of time or energy. You can sit, for example, on a weekend for an hour, write up 20 tweets, and schedule them so one goes Monday, one goes Tuesday, one goes Wednesday, and so forth, as well as tweeting on the fly, which is very helpful for us as updating information as it happens. Uh, so you can also synchronize it so that when you tweet, um, if you're lazy like me, or some people call it innovative, it depends on your side of the fence. Um, but basically you can use Twitter to immediately update to um, whatever goes up on your tweet, automatically syncs and goes up on your Facebook, your LinkedIn and a range of other social media platforms. So a very, very good platform for um, instant results and low resource use. We also use YouTube, we post up uh, videos up there on uh, tips uh, about what's happening in the market. Uh, for example, I put up a monthly video called How's the Market? And um, it gives local stats and facts about what's happening in South Australia with uh, tips and uh, suggestions for buyers, sellers, investors, tenants and so forth. And it's getting a very good following. But it was originally set up to keep our, our team involved with uh, and updated on the latest stats and facts. So rather than them having to read 20 reports a month, I read them and give a quick summary in three to seven minutes. And we decided it was so successful, we decided to share it with the public. And that in itself has also helped us maintain a presence, direct people to our website. It has generated inquiry and uh, gives us a chance to demonstrate our credibility in the sector that we are in and engage with the public without advertising, but just by providing an example of our service in advance. I also use LinkedIn. Uh, in LinkedIn is sensational. It's basically the Facebook for business, but it's probably more relevant to business to business people rather than business to the public uh, sellers. In my case, in, in my particular role, what I'll do is I'll use LinkedIn as a research tool. So for example, I needed a disk profiler to run personality profiling for our staff. Now, the normal method, as you know, when you're looking for a supplier is you would go and say, okay, who's in the, uh, 
who's in the list of suppliers out there, pull open the yellow pages or goodness knows what other medium and start ringing around, conduct interviews um, and basically lose hours if not days trying to find the right person and even then it's a bit of an unsure bet as to the quality of the person you have uh, until the day of the training. What I did with LinkedIn was I have about 700 odd uh, uh, followers, I believe the term is, uh, on my network. So what I did was basically posted up a message on LinkedIn and said, hey, I'm looking to run disk profiling for all of my team. Can anybody recommend someone that runs disk profiling that they have had first-hand experience with uh, that uh, basically they think would be fantastic to use. Now within 24 hours I had 12 responses come back, uh, many of them from uh, CEOs, state managers, group managers around the country. Eight of those 12 recommendations were for the same person and that person was here in Adelaide. That was my job done in about five minutes. We found our trainer. Similarly uh, from a business research point of view, if you're a business seller, I love LinkedIn, uh, again because you can go on there and find hot leads. Uh, for example, I had a bit of a bet with a gentleman who was the national marketing manager for a pump manufacturer. Uh, we were talking about the relevance of LinkedIn after we first saw it. I said to him, I reckon I could get six hot leads for you within half an hour. And uh, basically all I did was go on LinkedIn, go into the questions and answers section, dig down through the different uh, genres of questions to logistics, operations, and typed in the word pumps. Up immediately came a bunch of questions like, where can I find a slurry pump uh, for, and it gave a whole bunch of dimensions and requirements. Another one was, we're working offshore, need a large hydraulic pump, is there anywhere I can get one of these by ordering online, and so forth. I had about 10 leads in about 10 minutes, and they are all live and hot. So LinkedIn, great tool, uh, use that one regularly, and fantastic for networking, there's great business groups. You can throw a question out there to anybody, and it's amazing who comes back with answers. Uh, some of the top people in the world are more than happy to share information for free over LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, Facebook. Facebook I've left to last. We're only entering it now uh, as unfortunately what's happened with Facebook a lot is um, uh, Facebook for business really, I'd suggest, unless you're very, very good at that particular medium, it hasn't quite been there for most business people yet, but it has evolved in the last six months to have a proper business profile and business tools. So uh, again, after about two years of study and, and communicating with uh, yourself, Lee, um, I think we're now ready to enter the Facebook market and uh, we've got a Facebook website coming up this week, uh, which we're going to launch, which takes advantage of all those new tools. Um, and it certainly works to engage people, but profiles ourselves by saying, hey look, we know this is Facebook, but we're here for business, so there's no false illusions uh, and no false communication in that regard. So they're the mediums we use. Um, as I say, Twitter, fantastic entry level. LinkedIn, great business resource. YouTube, fantastic way to engage and profile your credibility. And uh, Facebook, well, we'll wait and see. Oh, successes uh, through social media, well, we've had quite a few and uh, very, very happy about them. For example, um, through Twitter, uh, because we're keeping a constant theme and stream going through Twitter, uh, and, and the theme we have is in relation to um, providing tips and hints, stats and facts, um, uh, media releases before the release to the media, things like that, what I've found through Twitter is I will receive, without exaggeration, two to three uh, press hits um, resulting in, in newspaper articles or media articles a month on Twitter through state and national magazines. That's anything from the Messenger to the Advertiser here in South Australia, uh, through to your investment property magazine, uh, Smart Property Investor, Australian Property Investor, the ABC, um, and so forth. So we've had uh, fantastic success, and that's been consistent for about 12 months. And we've only been on Twitter a bit over 12 months. Uh, and if you take up the dollar uh, and credibility value associated with those three spots in the press, uh, that's quite a big win. 
Uh, as well as that, there's been leads come through Twitter, which I've got to say it surprised me, as, as you know, uh, Lee. Um, I went on Twitter because it was a case of I wanted to involve our group in Twitter, and I said, look, guys, uh, to my team, particularly my sales team, look, I'll do it. And I wasn't really expecting uh, to be able to utilise it in my role and see a result back. But I've certainly seen franchise inquiries come back because people see us on leading edge. Um, I've seen, as say, media interviews. Uh, I've seen direct sales leads come through and result in, in some substantial sales. Uh, and it's also been very good in things like the tender process and so forth to show the relevance and placement of our organisation from not just throughout the sales force and the property management force, but even on the management team that we're engaged with social media and conscious of it. LinkedIn, as I said, massive time savings. Uh, and also some of the business relationships that have come out of there have been very, shall we say, dollar productive um, and very helpful and, uh, and, and quite a lot of fun too, I've got to say. Uh, it's a fantastic tool for um, business connection and uh, information, saves a lot of time. Uh, YouTube, once again, a lot of leads, a lot of um, in public engagement has come through that, and it's been a great way to engage the public too. So, for example, when we have a buyer inquiry come in, we can send out a lead, um, send, a, send out a YouTube link, uh, letting people know, here's some tips on how to save money when you're buying, just as we can send out a YouTube link showing uh, sellers how to take advantage of current market conditions with how they position the property. And even rental tips, we can send out a quick video to people seeking a um, rental, to uh, basically save them and our property managers a lot of time. Uh, we even created a YouTube video which has had, oh crikey, I think now it's on a few different mediums, YouTube and websites and so forth. Uh, it's had well over 10,000 hits and that was on what I call the hard truth in real estate. What happens in real estate is you have a lot of people apply for a job and as is the standard within the Australian employment sector as a whole, within two years most people leave their job and transfer because the, the job isn't quite what they expected. Uh, now this is particularly evident in the real estate sector, especially with how some people promote the job. It can be oversold. What we do is we present a video, 16 minutes, before people uh, start the job, um, or we just have it on YouTube, and uh, people watch that job, and the video is pretty much to talk you out of taking up a role in real estate. It's the hard truth, is what we call it. It goes through the what you do every day, the qualifications required, the real salary that people will receive in their first two years um, on industry average, based on stats and facts. Similarly, the hours that you work, the real challenges you'll face, and ongoing, as well as a whole bunch of tips and uh, suggestions about working in real estate and observations. Now we find that 80% of people who watch that video decide that they're not going to apply for the job. But we do find is the 20% who do apply come in fully understanding uh, what they're getting into and when they come into the interview, uh, their first interview, they've got all their questions ready and a lot of their answers already received. And the retention rate is sensational as a result. Oh, thanks, Lee. Um, well, yes, we, we, we have had a, quite a bit of success with social media. Again, it's only a bit over a year and a half since we really engaged social media, but we found it such a powerful tool for communication and customer, enga customer engagement. Um, we've pretty much released, as I understand it, two world firsts um, here in South Australia uh, through Rain and Horn. The first one was a platform for engaging our own staff. Uh, like many organisations, we've had the situation where people are absolutely swamped with email. Uh, where you know, I think there are statistics that say something like 50% of emails generally are not read these days. Um, and certainly I know I receive about 180 emails a day, and that's not just the CC'd ones. Um, so you know, I've had to put filters on there from not just spam, um, but from you know suppliers being CC'd on everything and all the rest. But nevertheless, that's still a lot of mail to get. The average Western professional, when I used to do sales training, I used to teach the the research had shown this is 15 years ago that the average Western professional, before looking at 
SMS, which wasn't around then, and all the other things, received 170 business interruptions a day. So it, it's very easy to see how quickly our time is eaten up. So what we did is we created a online newsletter. Uh, now what this did was it's a live newsletter. Uh, we call it Brainstorm. And basically what happens is we send out one email a fortnight rather than 10 or 20 a month from the state office that basically has bullet points and says in this edition of Brainstorm uh, is, um, you know, see who's been in the news, the following offices, uh, Salisbury, Morford Vale, um, uh, McLaren Vale are in the news this week or have been in the news last week. Um, read the articles on Brainstorm. There might be some, uh, a comment that there's a new supplier on to read about, a new competition, a new resource, training, or something that people can take advantage of. So it's just one email with bullet points. So what happens is people can look, open up Brainstorm, and they come up with a, um, a, a I suppose you could say, a grid with graphical pictures um, that take them through to what is relevant to them. So they don't have to read every email that comes to see, is this relevant to me? No, it's not. I'm not interested in new, what's happening in the news. Or I'm not interested in what's happening in training. Oh, I am interested in what's happening in industry gossip. You know, They can basically just pick the tag that's interesting to them, go to that, and read the latest information. Uh, there's links, videos, all sorts of interactive stuff, from training to tips, hints, suggestions to help them in the workplace, uh, and so forth. We've found that very, very useful. As I said, people now read and engage in that medium because they're only receiving two emails a month rather than having 10 or 20 going out to them from the state office. Um, all the information is there and when all our suppliers want to advertise or promote a service we just get them to send it through and we put it in brainstorm when there's new training or events coming up we put it in brainstorm so people can see six weeks at a time the calendar of what's coming up. It's not quite an intranet, it's not quite a website uh, it's something a little bit different, and we can even SMS it out to our clients. They can read it on a mobile device. Oh, sorry, our staff, so they can read it on a mobile device. That has been very good, um, and we've had that um, uh, basically described as a world first by a, a range of experts in the field, including yourself, Lee. Um, the other one is a e-magazine. Now, e-magazines are nothing new in real estate. Uh, certainly, they've been around for at least the last year or two. Uh, this is basically the idea of a, a buyer's magazine, it's the traditional format, where people can read a magazine, like flick the pages on an iPad or a, um, a tablet device, uh, and just look through properties for sale, click on the picture, and um, basically a picture opens up, gives them more information. So it's basically an electronic booklet. We've taken it one step further. We've worked with a group called Proactive Technology here in Adelaide, who are the, the biggest designers of this type of technology in the Southern Hemisphere. Went to Proactive uh, about a year ago and said, look, we've got, we've got a concept. What we'd like to do is create an online magazine, not just a buyer's guide, but we want to have videos in there telling people how to save money, make money, save time, reduce their stress levels in things to do with real estate. We don't want to put advertising through it. Um, we would like the advertising um, to basically just be reflected in the quality of the services that we describe and the tips and hints we give. Um, we want it to be easy to engage. So we want people, if they want to look at property, we want all our properties listed in there and we want the information to be immediately up to date, unlike some of the other magazines that are out there at the moment, which are updated monthly. We want every property that Rainhorn has in those magazines, whether it's in Roxby Downs, uh, Cooper Pedy, Fullerton, Glenelg, Morford Vale. Uh, and we want the information to be immediately up to date. So if a price changes in an office, within five minutes, bang, it's changed and updated on that magazine. Uh, we want people to be able to engage agents straight out of the magazine, watch videos, see tips, see hints, even look at job opportunities. Now, what came out of that is we created an e-magazine that now, on every single email at the bottom of a page sent out by, as part of the email signature, sent out by anyone at any time within the Rain and Horn network in South Australia, there are two logos. One is a e-magazine that covers statewide every single property we have for sale. Um, so what that means is rather than just saying we'll have a property 
put your property uh, in our office window and the window just up the street uh, at our other office, what we can say is your property is going to be advertised in every single email sent for any reason at any time by anyone in the group every day, um, which is incredibly powerful, and we don't charge for that. Um, similarly, um, we have the tips and the hints and the other things that draw people into the magazine. They can read that information and then look at property, or vice versa, look at property and then look at the tips and hints on how to buy that property. Um, similarly, the, we have a local magazine, which is unique again, which just concentrates on the property in the local area. That's the other link on the email. And if people pick that, um, it just brings up, say, local properties with a bit more, uh, a few more graphics and so forth in the initial layout so that they can look through those properties. And they can actually also review that on an iPad or a mobile device, so there would be a tablet or a uh, smartphone. So they can literally go into an open, um, scan a QR code, get the local magazine, and walk out of that open and have all the other local properties in there, their, time, their times for opens and so forth, updated as it happens. Um, and once again, they can also access through there the tips, the hints, the videos, uh, the job opportunities and everything else. These have been substantially um, uh, welcomed by the public. Uh, and the feedback that we've had has been brilliant. It's only been um, going now for uh, about three months. Um, but uh, as I say, it's free to the public, it's free to our offices, and um, it's certainly giving us a distinct advantage in the market. Oh, <laughs> every day that you delay being on social media, uh, your relevance declines rapidly. Uh, it's, social media is here. Uh, I can remember selling CAD and CAM back in the late, or sorry, the, the early 90s, um, and uh, explaining to people who were you know, still spiralling a pencil on a drawing board like I used to, uh, that uh, CAD is coming and you'll now be drawing on a computer, and it was a struggle. But these days, no one, no one in trade school anymore learns how to spin a pencil to keep a straight line. They're all learning programs like AutoCAD and uh, so forth. Um, simply mobile phones. Nearly lost my, one of my first sales jobs because I got a mobile phone and uh, that really raised a few eyebrows. The fact that it almost tripled my productivity, that was a different issue, but the fact that I got a mobile phone was against the norm. Um, so again, you know, there are things that people first looked at, thought, will this catch on? Social media is a reality. If you're not in it now, you are rapidly declining in relevance. 58% of women tweet. Um, that's just one stat that comes to mind. Uh, email. People aren't reading it anymore like they used to, but they'll still open up 84% of uh, SMS messages, for example, tweets, upon receipt. Now, think about that when you're struggling these days with just getting staff or team or even clients to read email. Social media is here. It is word of mouth electronically. I would suggest get onto it. But before you do, don't leap in until you find somebody. And I would suggest Lee here. He has been fantastic for us. Sorry, Lee, I'm going to give you a plug. Um, get somebody good to demystify the medium so you can pick out what works for you and what level of resources you're willing to apply to your social media and what, con what controls you can put in so it doesn't eat up you and your staff's time. Uh, and also work out what you want to achieve from your social media. There's no, no, no use just being on social media. What is the message? What is the personality? What is the profile um, that you want to convey? Once you've established those, find somebody to help demystify what is the right medium for you, which horse to back, and then get on with it.